是伸展，孩儿们伸展，欢迎大家参加华美协进社的午间中文。Welcome to China Institute Lunch and Learn. Uh, today is our last session for the for this season. Uh, I'm really happy that all of you are together with us. Uh, I believe all of us are old friends. Anybody new who just come to China uh, China Institute Lunch and Learn for the first time? Can you show? Can you mark your um? Uh, have the little icon. Yeah, we are all old friends. <laughs> <laughs> 好的，那、uh, I'm again here with my colleague Yong Chang. Yong Chang, 你在哪里？我在这里。大家好。So, 谢谢大家和我们一起学习中文。So, 我们很开心有大家加入我们。Yeah, very happy to have everyone, everyone join us to learn Chinese language, poetry, and culture. And also, as uh, we are all getting familiar with our team, uh, Meng Yun and Li Tong, our two volunteers, this is their last session for Lunch and Learn. At the end of the summer, they will go back to China to continue their master's study. Uh, it's, I'm very grateful that both of them join our team for this semester and great help to prepare the materials uh, and well, have their voices uh, in our lunch and learn. Uh, yeah, well, Meng Yun and Li Tong, do you want to say a few words? Uh, Li Tong, you want to start first? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Liao Lao and Lin Lao Shi. I'm very happy to meet I'm very happy to have made the new and old learners. Uh, lunch and learn. It's great to see that you have been coming and uh, to learn Chinese. And I'm also happy to see new students who are interested in Chinese time flies. And I hope to see you all to continue to learn Chinese in the future. And 希望你们以后。呃，继续参加我们华美的活动，也继续参加我们的午间中文。好，谢谢你们。谢谢李彤 ，Yeah， <laughs> 梦云。Hi everyone, I'm Meng Yun. So this is my last time attending Lunch and Learn as a staff. Uh, I'm glad to join our Lunch and Learn team, and so happy with everyone during these times. Yeah, we did a lot pre a lot to prepare the 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 every Friday's Lunch and Learn. From selecting points to making the PowerPoint and finally presenting to you, I learned a lot from it. So I'm very happy to share Chinese culture with you. I hope everyone will continue to join our lunch and learn in the future. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And well, uh, when we get a chance, well, I, I, I believe many of us share the wish to go to Shanghai, go to ECNU, go to your university, beautiful, beautiful campus. And of course, well, uh, for those of you who've been to Shanghai or maybe ECNU, Huadong Shifan Dashi, East China Normal University, uh, that's where our partner university is, where Lin Lao Shi, Li Tong, and Meng Yun are coming from. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope one day we, we can gather there. That will be a great trip uh, and a reunion. So I will start. Uh, let me share my screen for today's Lunch and Learn. Uh, as usual, uh, oh. yeah, so uh, we, we have four sessions and it's all around the theme of birds and flowers as our exhibition at China Institute continues until June 25th. Uh, I want to, even though this is our last online session for the season, uh, we are concluding uh, our program with an on-site program, the third Literati Salon. Uh, some of you may remember we had two in the past. 
uh, it was uh, a fun event. So if you are in New York um, on June 9th, it's an evening program. This time we make it uh, two hours long because one and a half hours apparently was not enough for the last two events. It's a combination of um, exactly what we do at Lunch and Learn. Read classical poetry together, uh, learn the culture, write the characters. So today um, we are going back to our tradition of writing a character after reading the poem. Uh, if you have your pen and paper ready, uh, we can do it together. Um, and our uh, and the, the, the library uh, lights are also going back <laughs> to be on and off. Uh, but Lin Lao uh, can you share a video of our previous lunch and learn? Uh, perhaps well, we will get uh, uh, a sense of what the event would be. I will stop sharing. Okay. Can you see it? I see it. Yeah, so it's exactly what we do uh, online, um, except that well, we prepare uh, calligraphy, everything, uh, everybody can join uh, the, uh, the music after reading the poem. We were in that video, we were actually doing the poem we did this semester. Uh, it's the Wang Mian, uh, the plum flowers. Bing Xue Lin Zhong, Zhuo Ci Shen. Yeah, so if you are in New York, uh, uh, it would be great to, uh, to see you in person and have this fun event together. So let's continue our reading today online as we are completing the theme. Um, oh, by the way, there are out of the 59 artists whose work are exhibited here in the gallery, uh, there are eight by women, uh, which uh, is a rare case uh, that will bring so many women artists from uh, the Qing, Ming and Qing dynasties all together and exhibit here. Uh, and to that, I chose this poem by Li Qingzhao, Ru Mengling. We are reading Ru Meng Ling today by Li Qingzhao. Many of you may remember her. We have read her poems in the past, and she is the most acclaimed female poet in China's long literary history. Um, we have a long list of poems that we have learned and read aloud together 
at Launch and Learn. Uh, some of you may notice we have a new website, Outlook. Uh, so if you go into the new website and find Launch and Learn, you will uh, be able to see the YouTube list, uh, the full list of all 35 poems we have read, including today's. Uh, all listed there, and you may uh, find Li Qingzhao's um, poems. I believe we read three of them. Uh, so, Ru Meng Ling, it's a short poem, and the translation is by Stephen Owen uh, from Harvard University. Let's just take a quick look of this short poem. We have been reading a lot of classical poems uh, in Jueju quatrains or Lu Shi regulated verses, especially in Tang Dynasty from 8th to 10th century. Because, well, for Jueju and Lu Shi, Tang Dynasty was really the time uh, that young earth thrived. Um, well, well, it is uh, to our belief, uh, meaning our team here putting Lunch and Learn together, uh, we believe the unique beauty of classical poems expressed through the combination of characters, songs, images, and meanings to convey human feelings and emotions in the most succinct way. So think about Jie Ju and Lu Shi, uh, there are like 20 characters or 28 characters uh, together, all together, but to really convey complex uh, meanings. Um, so, but this poem, Ru Meng Lin, is different. So if you take a look, can you tell me how it is different from the Jueju and Lu Shi we read before. Well, the others have- Anyone want to try? The others have five or seven characters. These have only six per line. However, look at this one, the second or the third line. Mm. As well, we, we cannot really put one line uh, on its own, so we put two lines together. This has five, and this has six. And then this one even two and two, and then the last one is six. Um, so in Li Qingzhao's time, it's starting in Song Dynasty, this is not the the genre of Tang poem anymore. This is, we call Ci, mm. literally, oops, literally meaning the lyrics, the song lyrics, the lyrics for the songs. So Ru Meng Lin is in fact the true one of, sorry, as we are troubleshooting this, um, maybe I can recite the poem. I don't have the poem in front of me. Uh, let's see if I can recite so you can hear the pronunciation, the rhythm. And that's, uh, well, thinking about how different it is from the Jueju and Lu Shi that we have learned before. So start from the top to one, Ru Meng Ling. Chang Ji, Xi Ting Ri Mu. 沉醉不知归路，心境挽回舟，误入藕花深处，争渡争渡，惊起一滩鸥鹭。That's the poem. So as I mentioned, while well, this is uh, lyrics, this is literally lyrics to the song with the tune 如梦令。Ru means like, Meng is dream. So the, 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 it's not necessarily the title for this particular 
poem. It is actually the name of the tune that's called Ru Meng Ling. Ling is the type of um, tune that's very brief, just like the one I recited. Uh, and while it also fits into the one hour lunch and learn, uh, which we are losing some minutes <laughs> because of the technology. <laughs> uh, let's start this. All right, now, um, again, well, thank you for your patience. Yeah, just to, to uh, you, you heard me uh, reading this uh, poem, this ci in its entirety. Well, by Song Dynasty, uh, Li Qingzhao's time, around the 11th to 12th century, uh, this different, this younger, different from the Tang Dynasty uh, classical poems uh, called Ci has become more popular with the irregularity of the lines and also uh, following the rhythm of music at the time that's popular. Um, it becomes more popular in terms of expressing uh, people's feeling at the time. So poets, they are not necessarily writing these as songs to be sung at the time, but while well, this has become gradually a popular poetry genre uh, in Song Dynasty. So, um, yeah, here we are uh, looking at Ru Meng Lin. I'm also inviting you to uh, look at the English translation to get the meaning across. Um, and I can start from the top. If you want, you can uh, read after me and we will go into line by line together. All right. Ru Meng Lin. 长记西亭日暮，沉醉不知归路。心境挽回舟，误入藕花深处，争渡争渡，惊起一滩鸥鹭。All right, that's the entire poem. And let's get to each line. So again, I will read twice after each line and then the entire line together. Chang Ji Xi. Ying Ri Mu Chang Ji Ji Ting Ri Mu Chen Zui Bu Zhi Gui Lu Chen Zui Bu Zhi Gui Lu Xin Jin Wan Hui Zhou Xing Jing Wang Hui Zhou Wu Ru O Hua Shen Chu Wu Ru O Hua Shen Chu
争，度，争，度，争度，争度，经，起，意。贪，欧，路，惊起，一贪，欧路。That's the entire poem. So I want to go back to the entire poem, and let's read. Together again. 如梦令，长记溪亭日暮，沉醉不知归路，兴尽晚回舟。误入藕花深处，争渡，争渡，惊起一滩鸥鹭。All right. So by looking, by reading the poem, and also looking at the translation, uh, made. Some of you may read the Chinese and get to the meaning and feelings, as well. So, can someone any questions or want to share how this poem, this Ci poem, make you feel? Anyone? You can unmute yourself and yeah, speak and share. <laughs> 有没有人？沉醉，呃，沉沉醉。Is she really、mm -hmm. drunk? <laughs> That's a very good question because 醉 is drunk, right? Um, but actually, we will uh talk more. Uh, 醉 indeed is drunk, but it can also mean something that's really intoxicatingly beautiful. Or mesmerizing, so you can say that、um, I I I I'm drunk because of drinking. But also, it could be well, the scenery is so beautiful that it's、uh, making me feel I'm getting drunk because of the beauty.、Uh, this could be、um, it's not a literal description,、um, but well, wine、uh, could be something. That You are accompanying and outgoing with the poet or poets.、Um, yeah. Okay, she's drunk with flowers. We don't know that until her, the third line. <laughs> 误入藕花深处 Right. Well, it could be she was drinking, and、um, uh, while、well, we talked about her life、uh, in previous sessions. Uh, it's actually quite dramatic because, well, she was born into the time that the dynasty was in a dramatic change.、Uh, well, we always talk about poets living in time that's that that's dramatic and well tumultuous,、uh, and that actually、uh, becoming the factors that well make their、uh, poet poems are so great. So for Li Qingzhao. She was born into a very well-to-do family. Her her family, her father was a high official in the Northern Song Dynasty, and she married to her husband, also from a big family, had a, a great had a, a well-educated and cultured life when she was、uh, younger.、Uh, so when we read this poem, typically、uh, a lot of、um, people may associate with her. Youth time, that she had a lot of joy、uh, in her youth time.、Uh, 
Uh, and then um, when the dynasty uh, was taken over by the Mongols uh, in uh, 1127, actually that was the year, uh, the Mongols from the north uh, took over the country, uh, the dynasty ended and she herself fled to the south. And from that point on, uh, her life was completely upside down. Uh, her husband died a few years later and she was alone, uh, lost her family, the treasure, the kind of lifestyle that she enjoyed as a young girl or young woman. But she continued uh, writing and her poems were actually carrying a lot of more weight um, and reflecting the uh, traumatic experience that she experienced as well as many other uh, poets or people uh, experience at the time. Uh, in fact, while she married, she remarried, uh, which was unusual, um, and the husband was abusive. So she managed to get a divorce. That was even unheard of at the time. Uh, and, and because of the, the punishment at the time for a woman to divorce her husband, she was in fact in prison for uh, a year or so as a result of that. She was rather taking that than continuing uh, unacceptable marriage. So she, her, her life has a lot of ups and downs. And um, when you think about her life and reading this poem, we don't know exactly when this poem was written. Uh, so if it was written to me when I'm reading this, uh, if it was written in, uh, in her young age, uh, that's really a reflection of the joyful time she had. Uh, and it could be uh, as the, the tune of this poem, this Zi, like a dream. Uh, I, I sometimes also think in, in her later years, uh, when there was a moment, she was thinking about her younger life, uh, writing this poem, uh, that, that, that to me generates a different feeling. Um, so, but well, this is, this is uh, exactly the, the kind of characteristics of Chinese poems. Uh, it's descriptive. Uh, it does not exactly telling you how the poet is feeling, but it's by describing the sceneries. Uh, we have flowers, we have lotus flowers here. Uh, we have birds, uh, the O and Lu, the egrets and the gulls. Um, and it's all lovely, a natural scene. Um, but well, uh, you could, uh, by understanding the poet's life or how when you read this, it's connected to your own life and experience. Uh, there could be different layers of feelings that well, we can feel. Um, yeah. So that's not exactly answering the question, but it's like I, I went out for a while. All right. Any other questions or comments? I was wondering, um, just because of the word chen, which means sinking, and then the use of the lotus imagery, if she might be implying something like getting stuck in the mud, like feeling kind of uh, metaphysically lost or something like that. It could, uh, Chen, the, the word itself, actually the pronunciation is going down. So that's also when we're talking about uh, the characters, the meanings, the song are all together. Chen Zui, it's sort of like going deeper. When I read that, I, I, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. Um, but it could, uh, well, to me, when I read this, it's really about, well, just getting lost. Um, and it could be uh, getting lost in a, in a, in a wonderful outgoing uh, in the sunset uh, to the pavilions by the creek. Um, so um, it, it not necessarily, uh, it implies that it's like so drunk that cannot find the way. Yeah, 
I want to actually introduce, because well, we have a Ohua, that's lotus flowers here. It could be like, well, really Chen Zui, and then get into the, the, the deep, uh, get deep into the flowers um, in, that she encounters at, in this poem. Um, the one of the paintings, actually the center painting of the exhibition at China Institute right now, Flowers on a River, um, is this one by Ba Da Shan Ren, uh, also Zhu Da from 17th to early 18th century. This is just a part of this painting. It's a, it's a long scroll, very unusual for this type of paintings uh, from Tianjin Museum. And well, the artists are using very different materials uh, for the poet, uh, Li Qingzhao, she uses characters and the sound, the, uh, the words to express her feelings. And then the artist using ink and brush. Um, it's, this, it's a similar uh, subject. We have lotus flowers here. So maybe just the, well, you, you may know about Ba Da Shan Ren a lot. Uh, you may not. Uh, maybe this is the first time you're looking at this. So do you have any first reactions to this painting? The poet is drunk among his lotus. Uh huh. I mean, the yes. Painter, the painter is drunk. <laughs> the painter is drunk. Yes. Well, yeah, Ba Da Shan Ren, in fact, was known to be, um, uh, well, now we, we, we really get into that word, drunk, <laughs> Um Yeah, he was known to, to, uh, to be drunk and, and acting crazy. Uh, at his time. This is another character. Uh, well, yeah, character in China's uh, artist history uh, that, well, if you know his life experience, well, it also explains a lot uh, of this sort of the free hand of painting uh, lotus flowers, not accurate. Uh, it's more of expressing his really going almost wild of the lines and the ink brushes uh, to express how he feels about life. Do you feel peaceful by looking at this? Yeah, I see some heads yeah, shaking. Do you feel joyful as well? We read the, the poem just now. His, his energy. He, he, it's just as if he's swimming in the water among the lotuses, but uh, he's still very clear eyed about what he is painting. And um, it's extraordinary experience. It's not calm, not excited. It's for me, <laughs> that it's an explosion of energy without impact. I mean, <laughs> it's just totally, mm -hmm. Um, engaging. I mean, you just, he, he just brings you right into the midst of those flowers, just like she, she fell, she almost fell into the lotus pond. Mm -hmm. Well, it's as though the artist is, he's, he's, his head is in between the leaves of the lotuses. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's in the water yes. at the level of the lotuses rather than looking down on them as we usually would be. Mm hmm. Yeah, very good observations. And yeah, as if we are picking the flowers or watching the flowers from around them, in them. Yes. And then, yeah, it's, it's our, a, head, our head is in among the lotuses. Right, exactly, exactly. Well, it's a, it's a nice connection. It reminds me of the line that it's like you are really deep in it and your heads are among the flowers. Yes. Yeah. But I, I totally, well, this explosion of energy you could feel uh, just by looking at a small per portion of this painting. And Ba Da Shan Ren, uh, he's the end of Ming Dynasty. 
so like Li Qingzhao, I was mentioning she was at the end of the Northern Song Dynasty. Ba Da Shan Ren, he is, he was from, he, he is a direct line from the emperor of the Ming Dynasty. And his time was also, he lived through the time when Ming Dynasty at the end of, um, uh, well, in 17th century was taken over by the Manchus in the North. Uh, so if you are familiar with China's history, there's a lot of um, the, uh, the, the North and the South, well, the, the Han people and the non-Han uh, groups well, are battling in the, in the land. So he was also forced to flee to a monastery uh, in his teenage years. I believe it's like about 18 years old. He had to flee to hide uh, in the monastery as a monk. And he lived there for about 30 years. And when he came back to the secular life, um, leaving his monk identity behind, uh, he, became an, uh, he has been practicing Buddhism and um, artist, art uh, all his time. But then he became a professional artist uh, in his hometown. Uh, he was hiding because, well, he was worrying about his own life. And eventually the Qin Dynasty uh, was settled as a prince of the Ming Dynasty court. Uh, he finally found he could return uh, to his secular life, but he had to be like really acting crazy and drunk um, a lot of times well, to, uh, to be able to uh, keep his life together. But you could feel uh, this kind of uh, energy or whatever powerful experience and feelings well, he wants to express uh, from the painting. And of course, well, Lotus Flowers has always this uh, connection with Buddhism. Uh, so he found uh, in his later life, well, he painted Lotus a lot. Uh, and this is one of the longest scrolls uh, we are looking at, um, over 70 feet, in fact. Mm. Uh, so if you are in front of it, you will uh, even feel it's more powerful. Yeah, I was putting these two together. Uh, there's the obvious connection of the, the flower uh, that the lotus, he hua or o hua, uh, that what we are looking at. Um, but well, the, the kind of uh, life experience, ups and downs, very different individuals, um, but how their art, uh, the poem, the brush painting are connected to their life experience. Uh, that's, I feel there's a, they are resonate to each other, even though uh, several hundred years are apart. Um, so uh, let's, move on to, this is the, let's, well, after all this talking, maybe without pinyin, uh, let's read this together again. Ru Meng Ling. Ru Meng Ling. Chang Ji Xi Ting Ri Mu. Chang Ji Xi Ting Ri Mu. Chen Zui Bu Zhi. Gui is a tool, right? 争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争度,争
o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o o I think well, it deserves. 最这是小篆 the small seal. 嗯啊 from 说文解字 and this is the current form that what we are writing. 最 not too different. 啊、uh, but 最 as in 沉醉不知归路啊、uh, we can write this. Together, if anyone wants to know how to write O, that lotus word, well, we can do it after the session. So again, we talked about what、well, this word drunk,、um, but in fact, it could be used、uh, to describe something that's not necessarily literal about drinking.、Uh, when you are really get lost into something beautiful, usually. Ah,、uh, you could use this. So, ah,、uh, for example, you can say, "Oh, the 景色 the scenery, 很醉人 It's intoxicating, intoxicatingly beautiful. So it's a little bit with that kind of um、uh, feelings. And now let's take a look at this character. Can you tell me the structure? Is it left, right, top? To bottom,、mm. how would you describe、uh, the structure of the character? Left, right, left and right. 左左边是这个，对不对？然后右边是这个。Yeah, we have the similar 左边 and 右边 in today's regular form. 楷书 and 小篆 So the 左边 is very If we're thinking this literal meaning has something to do with drinking, what this left part remind you with? The bottle. It's a container of wine. It looks a little bit like yeah, a container of wine, right? Well, this is from like a almost a hundred A.D. at the time when the when this character was written, on、uh, an older form. It's even more literal. This is this. It's literally looking at. If you walk into a museum, this looks like a depiction of the container. And then over time, yeah, it becomes this. We can still see. It's almost like there's a top, and there's the body. And I tend to think this part is like a lot of the wine bottles still have that empty、uh, area at the bottom、uh, for preserving reasons. Uh, this looks precisely like that. So this this is a character on its own.、Um, by indicating this is a container, it's actually the meaning of this character. Yo, that's the pronunciation. Refer to mature, the time that is maturing. So thinking about what we are making wine, or we are storing,、uh, keeping a storage of something、uh, in the agricultural time, that's when the harvest or when the crops、uh, are mature.、Uh, so this、uh, not only there's a pictographic connection there,、uh, but also meaning-wise,、uh, it's related to、uh, the the time that the nature is maturing. The right, 右边右边 here is more of a character itself.、Uh, in this character, it's representing the pronunciation. So on its own, it's pronounced 足 And this is the character today. We still pronounce it as 足 And it's close to the entire pronunciation of this character, zui.、Uh, even though there's a slight difference here, but in ancient time, it could be very close to represent the pronunciation of the entire character. However, 
the meaning of zu itself could also there is a connection there because it could mean the end of something or even even today it, it could mean drop dead ah. so so when it combines with with something that's representing uh, drinking you could see the visual uh, the meaning con connecting together uh, is to towards the end of drinking um, and that would be zui. Uh, you do not want to go beyond that uh, the original meaning actually for zui is just right before you lost to yourself so it's the end of your tolerance uh, to to get the the kind of feeling that is zui. There's another character that means well, it's beyond what you can take. Uh, we don't want to go there. <laughs> All right. So let's uh, again let's write this together. Uh, I would ask if my colleague Meng Yun is there for the writing pad. I can see she's there. I will stop sharing my screen so she can share. I can pin her writing pad. There you go. Can you see? Yes. Great. So Meng Yun is going to start with the Xiao Zhuan, the seal style. And yeah, Meng Yun, and while if you have your pen and paper ready, uh, let's write this together, starting from the left part. So the, yeah, keep going. So for Xiao Zhuan style, the key point again is to keep it even. Every line is the same strength which takes practice to achieve that. Yep. And don't forget the bottom, that empty space at the bottom of the bottle. Yeah, that's the left part. The right part, we start from the top, Yep. So this right part is actually something that's written on the soldiers, for example, or yeah, clothes. So there is a part that representing the clothing someone is wearing. And oftentimes the soldiers would have a character written on the clothes that they wear, and that's this character. And um, if you think think of the soldier as well, the being the the really the the most fundamental, the bottom of an army, and that's related to the meaning. That's the end of something as well. All right. Um, just to clarify, do you mean the character Zhu is? Uh, separate on the, the uniform of the soldier? The, the character Zhu is written on the uh, clothing of a soldier in Han Dynasty. Oh, and Han. that's how, yeah, that's, that's how uh, the, the Zhu, that character also representing soldiers, uh, even in today's, um, in okay. today's meaning. It, it doesn't imply that they will die though, does it? I mean, <laughs> No, no, no. So the, 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 it's really, it's a complex uh, layers of meanings for the character. It means uh, soldiers or the really the, 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 the bottom of an army. It also means, well, drop dead. Uh, it's, uh, you could make that association, but well, the character itself doesn't mean the soldier is dead already. What, what about the character for Bing? Um... Mm -hmm. Bing, is, Bing is more, uh, we use that in more colloquial and Zhu. Uh, if you play Chinese chess, you will see the soldiers, the 
the uh, yeah to 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 really move the smallest pieces on the one side is zu on the other side is bing yeah all right uh, Meng Yun, do you want can you write a um the regular form kai shu yeah well let's let's do the kai shu together too because well that's we don't write this style anymore in daily language using uh we can do usually kai shu and that's how we write this character but the structure remains the same and we start from the left and you yeah this now you will never miss that one little line before you close uh, the bottom line because that's representing that empty space there and then on the right the zu Is I'm still interested in the relationship between Zhu and Bing or Bing. Um, mm -hmm. Is one more classical than the other, or does one imply a battalion of soldiers, or is there another term? And Zhu is just an individual? Um, not necessarily. Zhu is a more sort of a, a classical way of referring to Bing. But they both can mean um, individuals. Hmm. Yeah. And also, if you want to refer to soldiers as, um, as a general term, both can be used as well. It's just today, for example, if we want to say being uh, soldiers, well, we use being more than zu. zu sounds really something that um, from either uh, classical texts, not necessarily from the poems, um, but well, it's, it's more uh, the written form referring to soldiers. Mm. Yeah, that's our character today. Mm. 好的,谢谢梦云. Yeah. Did you all write your own way? You want to share how it looks like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, it is our lunch and learn today. Uh, 